Welcome to Cynthia Untamed, live from the beautiful city of Cape Town in South Africa. This is your youthful and educational platform where we have conversations about youth, leadership, sustainable development. I am a Mandela Rhodes Scholar from Kenya and with me today I have a group of scholars attending the leadership workshop in 2023 and I just wanted to share a couple of tips on the interview, the application process, how to select your university, because I know this information will be so useful to you as a prospective applicant. So make sure you stay tuned to the rest of the conversation and always remember to tell a friend to tell a friend. Hello and welcome back to Cynthia Untamed. As I had promised, I have the Mandela Road Scholars Class of 2023 here with me to talk about the MRF scholarship and interview process. So the first question I will direct would be to Rickson and I'm going to ask him, what is the MRF scholarship? So the Mandela Road Scholarship is a leadership program opportunity for young Africans. It aims at building exceptional leadership in Africa. It is an official legacy organization for of Nelson Mandela. And I really hope that uh, you're going to apply for this scholarship. You can get more information on the Mandela Road Scholarship website. My next question would be to you, Chomba. What made you apply for the Mandela Road Scholarship? Oh, yeah. Um, the fortunate part is actually this is the best scholarship that I'm applying for. And you know, it's, um, it was that time of the, of the year when I really needed a transition in my life, especially in my career. And my husband actually shared the link with me and I began the process. And here I am today. Amazing. Cheers to your husband. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> awesome. So, Melissa, how would you go about tackling a personal case statement? What are the general tips for our youth? Okay, um, I'll speak generally on the issue of the ESA questions that um, are in the application process. What was um, instrumental for me when I was going through the, the questions was staying true to myself. I, the questions are thought-provoking. They are not the type of essays that you can look up on Google and come up with like pointers to say, if I say these right things, I'm definitely going to go through. It's more, it's more of um, an authentic journey because they are not like the usual questions you're used to be asked in, in, in essay writing. It's something that will um, force you to sit down and think deeply about your position as an African leader, um, the circumstances that you have observed in the continent, in your country, or in your context. And so what I would say you should do um, as a prospective scholar when you're faced with an essay question is to first think about um, the issues that aggravate you the most and issues that you, you know you're able to speak passionately about and just write down um, um, the thoughts as they come as authentic as you can. And also another tip I would give is um, Contrast to what I did in the process, I, I, my process, my process of application was really rushed. And if I could go back and do it, um, I'm thankful that it worked out at the end. But I didn't have as much time as I would have wanted to to work on my essays. So I'll say that you start as soon as you as you as you can, as soon as the scholarship opens. Familiarize yourself with the question, sit with it, see how it makes you feel, um, write down your thoughts. Sometimes you might need to move around with a notebook and just things pop in your head, you just write down the thoughts before you can develop the essay. And when you've managed to write something, compose something from your thoughts, um, encourage that um, you find someone that you um, trust or someone who is familiar with the, with the subjects you've, you've written about, so anyone that you know will um, criticize you, um, but in a constructive way. We have them read your essay and um, well, have them correct you, whether it's your grammar or it's um, the way some, some of your thoughts are coming through, maybe not um, shining through as much in a way that you want them to. Just have someone who, who reads your thoughts and then um, gives you some, some corrective pointers and then you can polish it. You can even give it to two different people um, and you have a final product in the end. 
but just remember to stay true to yourself. Yeah, for sure. Stay true to yourself. Thank you, Melissa, for that concise answer. So we know immediately after the essay, the personal statement, you now get to wait for your interview. So I'd like to wait for you to speak about the interview process. What are the general tips that a prospective scholar would follow? All right. Um, I would like to say just be yourself. Calm down. Whatever you think is going to come, it's probably not. Because um, <laughs> The time that I went in, I was so used to like the Malawian way of like interviewing questions. You have the bad cop, good cop, and like you know they just out there to like grill you. Um, they they don't want to see you. They don't they don't want to see who you are. Rather, they want to see a facade of who you are. Like I'm this professional. I get everything. I get all things done, and I'm like you know perfect. And this is what I've done. This is what I've done. But that's not what they're looking for. They're not looking for someone who is perfect, rather someone who is, who says yes to change. If they they're passionate about bringing change, with with their their strengths and with their weaknesses, all that all that package. What are you bringing to the table? If you're ready to make a change, if you're that person, then you fit the criteria. So. Um, calm down, bring your most authentic self to the interviews, and indeed, like after every interview, when someone was coming out, we said, how is it, and every, everyone kept on saying, be yourself, and you know, before you went to the interview, you'd be like, what, what do they mean, be yourself, because, what do they mean, I, in almost every interview that I've been in, I've been myself, but like, it's like, you know, it doesn't work out, but like everybody kept on saying, be yourself, be yourself, until I went to the interview and like the panel was so warm, it was too good to be true. So I decided, you know what, I'm just gonna be me. And I brought my most authentic self. Do you see how I like talk with like hand gestures and I have a like, powerful voice? Yeah. And like usually sometimes people are like, eh, not her. Yeah. But I could see them like responding to my energy and like letting me just flourish and flow. So bring your most authentic self and you will be accepted in this circle. Yeah. yeah. Yes, Toba. And just to add on, I think you are telling your story. So they need that truthfulness in you. They are trying to put what they have on the paper to the face. So if you're being truthful from the start, what you are written, like Melissa has talked about, what you write in the essay, speaks to you. It's what you're going to deliver in the interview. So you just need to tell your story. And like she has said, emphasis is being honest. Tell it as it is. Tell your story. Do not sugarcoat it. Do not go to YouTube. You download all those interview <laughs> questions. The ones that they would ask you, why do you want this job? It's basically different. It's the most. Wow, I, I think we're in the same room with yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. why you ask this? Yeah. Like, Actually, this? she was my roommate, and we went back to our rooms and like. Me and Job are like overthinkers, so we went back to our rooms and we were like, it went too well. And Job was like, Don't, you know what, let's just expect, like usually, you know when you expect good, it doesn't like happen. Yeah. So like, it was just too good to be true. So, <laughs> honestly, yeah. be yeah. yourself. Yeah. But I, I just want to add something as well. Yeah. When they're talking about being roommates, you also need to know that when you reach the interview stage, you're going to be flown to Cape Town. Yay! Yes. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Free! Just to say, guys, it's a conversation. Yeah. The way we're chatting now, it's even a more relaxed space. Yes. We're just like talking to peers about integral issues in Africa and then where you stand with them and how you feel about them so that they just get to grow in better. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I would also like to say that like, um, you do really want to apply for your scholarship. Um, I know sometimes we're more inclined to like apply for, for scholarships in Europe, you know, USA, mm -hmm. but everyone needs warmth in their life. Yeah. They also need, you, you just don't want to work, 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 work. Yeah. This scholarship not only 
um, gives you an opportunity to learn, but it also gives you family. And like this, yeah. there's just this certain warmth <laughs> with the MRFT. Yes. Like, I mean, the actual MR, not us, but like the actual MRFT, like the administrative, you know, the guys doing finance, administration, like they are your friends. When you come to the leadership development program, these are the people like you're chatting with. Even during the interviews, like yeah. we're joking around with these guys, and it just feels so warm and just so at home. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking to like develop yourself, but at the same time, um, find family, then this is the right scholarship for you. And yeah. Then, yeah. I, I have some additional points on the tips. So one of the most critical things that you need to consider when you're applying is to find three recommenders for the scholarship. And I think that is the most critical part of the application because you don't really have full control of that. The recommenders, you are going to invite them to the application portal and then they are going to write their recommendations and upload. So before you invite anyone on the application portal, it's important to reflect and think about the kind of people who may talk about you in a very straightforward way, but also in a way that will show to the scholarship, to the foundation that you're someone worthy of this opportunity. So people who are able to elaborate your areas for development, how you might grow through the scholarship. So it's important to take some time to really find the right that. And just on this, I would like to echo on something. This is a very important point that you have already brought out. I remember changing one of my recommendations <laughs> because I noticed that a week remaining to the deadline, <laughs> this person has not even opened oh, the link yet, yeah. yeah. so I had to change uh, yeah. one of the recommenders. Yeah. So I think this is a very valid point that. Yeah, yeah, that's a very important point. And even as we, we conclude this conversation, I know one of the challenges a prospective scholar will be going through is also finding the right academic program to apply for and also finding the right university here in South Africa to apply to. So I'd just like to ask each of you to briefly speak on that. How would you choose your program and the university that you want to go to? Um, for me, I would say the first thing you have to consider is um, what if you're doing an honors, then you are required to apply for something that is like um, what's the word? Sapa. Oh yeah, you you yes. will need a sapa. By the way, yes, <laughs> and please <laughs> give yourself enough time. Like once you get accepted, or even before that, please do apply for your sapa, and like you can reach out to like any of us or someone that knows the process to apply for yourself but like apart from that like for my selection of school I was looking for um, I had to look for um, a school that's providing courses that um, I already did like mm -hmm. so I, I did political science so I had to look something I had to look for something that's like related to what I did so that is like political and conflict studies international politics yeah something like that uh, well, for me, I always knew I wanted to, to study public health at some point in my career. Yeah. And um, to notice that uh, Mandela Rose gives you a list of universities that you can apply to when you are in this uh, scholarship. So it's not every South African university, but it's quite a long list. So you were spoiled for choice in that, in that sense. But I chose the University of Cape Town because it's important to me the ranking of the university as well in terms of um, the ranking of universities. <laughs> Someone's rolling their eyes, but yeah, I did look at that, and the 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 weight of my masters when I'm done was important to me. That's why I chose the University of Cape Town. Yes, uh, for me it was really the, the the same thing. I looked at the universities that had the programs that were available and uh, related to my career. So for me, having gone to the University of Nairobi in Kenya, many of my lecturers had gone to the University of Cape Town. So it was really more of a guided direction of what I would want to apply for. I think uh, for me it's different anyway. I think I would like to mention this, especially scholars that, prospective scholars that would come from Zambia. One thing that you need to bear in mind is 
There is um, in South Africa, they have honors program, they have a master's program. So in Zambia, we do undergraduate. It's for four years, mm -hmm. yeah. and the, the the last year you do the research paper. Mm -hmm. So generally, in Zambia, we know that if you are done with undergraduate, definitely you need to do a master's. So it was really difficult for me when I applied in South Africa. I had to do the SAPWA evaluation. They credited me with the uh, NQFZ7. So I was applying for a master's. So I had difficulties getting admission because I was applying for a master's program. Unfortunately, I was graded to have a bachelor's, meaning I needed to do an honors program. So I would like to, to bring this to your attention to ensure that SAPWA, probably SAPWA should be the, the, the second thing that you do after submitting for the scholarship yes, because it takes some time for the evaluation to be out. So, yeah, and basically I think that was the time that I would want, that, the time that I needed to switch to a, a different program. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because I'm now doing, I'm now pursuing women and gender studies, mm -hmm. but at undergraduate I did special education. It was again, but in a similar line because it still talks about marginalized societies mm -hmm. and all that here. Yeah. So I think I really need to mention that, that other countries, I think even Zimbabwe, mm -hmm. even have the Malawi as well. Oh really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So what I can add here is also that the Madeira Roads Scholarship is not restrictive of what disciplines you can apply for. So whatever sort of discipline or interest that you may have, as long as it is offered at a South African university on that list that Melissa spoke about, you can, you can apply for that and they will be able to fund you if you are successful. Um, another thing is also for people who want to switch careers, I know there are some masters that restrict people along, uh, what, what do they call it? Cognate disciplines, so related disciplines only. But the Mandela Rose Scholarship actually funds all sorts of career uh, trajectories. So you just need to know your story, own your story of your journey, why are you shifting perspectives and you should be fine. Yeah, I think a postgraduate diploma. Yes, yes. Post yeah, professional yeah. master's degrees, honors degrees, yeah. masters by dissertation, masters by research. As long as it's higher education, honors up. Just to conclude the, this conversation, I'd really like to touch on the subject of resilience. Chomba here said this was the first time she was applying and she got in. <laughs> but Rickson here was applying for the second time. So could you speak to that? Sure. <laughs> so the, the first time I applied was in 2018. Back then when I applied, I went all the way to the interview stage and I think I can bring in my point here where you go into the interview with certain expectations of what an interview should be or how an interview should be handled. And I think in that sort of mindset, I got lost. So my first interview was not good at all actually. <laughs> it went south <laughs> from the very moment. Yeah. Because I went there and the questions that I was getting were so unexpected. Mm -hmm. They seemed so trivial that I started thinking it was probably Yeah, I was overthinking and lost myself in yeah. the interview. The second time, however, I was also very nervous because it's my second time <laughs> and then I'm also applying to do a second yeah. master's. master's. Yeah. So I was really nervous. My can oh, attest yeah. to that. Yeah. 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 He did he come and he was like <laughs> and he was all of us were shouting later. We're all shouting like just be yourself. And he's like, is it? Just be yourself. So I was the last person to be interviewed, but as Maya said also, the, the staff actually are very warm. So the moment I started chatting with some of the staff, I just relaxed. Yeah. 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 yeah, and does anyone have anything to add? 
Well, maybe in the case of interviews, uh, since we're on the topic, people wonder what they should dress like on the day of the interview. Usually, yeah. <laughs> just relax. <laughs> yeah, just dress in any way yeah, that, you that, you feel, yeah, yeah. that you feel. You feel comfortable. You feel expresses your personality and your style. It's it's. But you have to know that they take a picture of you, which then then um, that would be used on the website. Yeah. So you do want to like. If they post that picture, you don't want to like look back and say, "What was I thinking?" Yeah. yeah. So yeah, you, you look good. I just had a. Uh, I I have an example in mind. So the first time that I came, I came uh, well prepared in terms of my dress up. Mm -hmm. I was donning a suit. Wow. So was <laughs> but I wasn't successful. I think it also has to relate with how you know yourself and how comfortable you yeah. are. Yeah. Have, do you have a certain dress sense, you know, what feels natural to you? But you also need to look quite professional in a sense. So even though I was wearing a suit for the interview, I had a wear suit. And maybe that was part of the packaging that did not yeah. wear. Yeah. The second time I was wearing a blue sweater and... Yeah. <laughs> Clothes that I would probably not wear them yeah. in an interview because yeah, I know yeah. how people will treat yeah. mm. each other in interviews. Yeah, yeah. yeah and, I, and I think on that one, I remember getting a suit, it was a bit big, more in the room. Yeah. I didn't have my heels on, oh, I gosh. forgot my heels back in Zambia, <laughs> and I couldn't have time to shop for, for, yeah. for, for new shoes. Yeah. And then my was like, all right, mm -hmm. after I'm done with my interview, I'm going to give you your shoes. But you know, we're so lost in the conversation because the place was so beautiful, mm -hmm. it was friendly. We yeah. forgot about it and then I later on realized the time was coming back and I was like, I forgot to give you my shoes and like, oh wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so we've come to the end of our discussion today. Thank you so much for being a part of this conversation. Thank you, Mwai, Melissa, Choma, and Rickson for sharing your stories, sharing your perspectives, and encouraging the prospective scholars. The scholarship will be available on the Mandela Road Scholarship website, and I'll make sure to leave the link in the description bar. You can also follow me online at Cynthia underscore Opera on Twitter, at Cynthia Opera underscore Nogesa on Instagram. How about you guys? What are your social media handles? Why I'm so care on Instagram. Why I'm so care on Facebook. <laughs> it's also Melissa Baby everywhere. Feel free to inbox me on Facebook or Instagram. Mm -hmm. I'll reply. Chombanyam Bambanga everywhere, Instagram, Facebook. Uh, you might find me on social media, but unfortunately <laughs> I'm not sharing now. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Anyways, I will see you in the next episode. Please do tell a friend to tell a friend. Bye.